this is Bridget with Bridget's She Shed. Well, it's been a minute since uh, we last were together. Actually, it's been almost uh, two weeks. I think our last publication of episode five was back on June 13th. So welcome to episode six. Today is June 26 of 2022. And I'm coming to you from sunny South uh, East Arizona, where it is very warm. And we have been having uh, monsoon storms, which are heavy uh, rains and thunderstorms and lightning. So we'll see how far we can go, but welcome. Welcome back to all of my uh, viewers. Welcome back to, welcome to all of um, any uh, new viewers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And a big, big thank you to all of my subscribers. I'm just amazed every time I, I take a peek into the uh, analytics on YouTube and I'm like, oh my gosh, another subscriber. So thank you very much. Also a big, big thank you to those of you who uh, have been leaving wonderful comments. I've enjoyed reading them and responding to them. So please keep it coming. Um, like I said, this is episode six of Bridget's She Shed. Uh, I provide um, all the information that I discussed today. I provide it in links below in the description box or show notes. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and I also have an email address and all of that info, like I said, will be in the show notes. So this is my small little corner of the world where I get to share what I love to do, which is knitting, crocheting, uh, sewing, um, some painting, uh, embroidery, just a lot of different crafty endeavors. So grab your beverage of choice. Today we have uh, sparkling apple grape cider. Yum. So grab your beverage of choice, grab your knitting or crocheting or whatever. And strap your seatbelt on because we're getting ready to have some uh, summer breeze fun. All right, let me just take a quick sip. So I had some um, life issues come up and that's why I had a short little break. I took a short trip that was very uh, unexpected and um, not really planned to uh, back to California. Uh, I'm in the United States, by the way, in case any of you viewers are are watching from outside of the United States. And um, so I took a quick trip back home to check on family. And it was a nice, nice trip, quick turnaround. And uh, so that's why I missed um, vlogging or podcasting or whatever you want to call it. So, but everything's all good. Uh, I love driving across the, the desert. It's about an eight and a half hour drive from our house to uh, Los Angeles. And I said, oh boy, I took my knitting with me. I'm gonna get a lot of knitting done. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to a little bit further in the whips, but yeah. So 17 hours in the car, that's round trip. Lots of knitting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> First thing I want to talk about is FOs. I have two FOs, none of which I made. How about that? There's a twist. The FOs I have actually were uh, crocheted and knitted by my mom. Now, um... I have no problems with saying I am a very proud senior woman of 61 and almost pretty close to 62 actually my birthday is in August I'll be 62 years old and I have no problems with saying that so you kind of do the math and kind of figure out how how young my mom is and she is an incredible knitter. As I mentioned in the very first episode, uh, she taught me how to knit, crochet, and sew. So we, because of the fact that uh, we live in two different states, we talk 
several times during the day and we knit and crochet and talk on the phone while we're doing it so she made a couple of items for me so I'm counting those as finished objects for me since I feel like I've made them because we're talking about the patterns I'm helping her she's helping me on my thing so what I am wearing is one of my mom's finished objects isn't it gorgeous I'll stand up in just a minute this is the um, easy pull over easy mesh easy mesh pull over it's a lion brand pattern and the designer is Teresa Chorzina and let me show you what it looks like isn't that pretty and this is made out of um, Hobby Lobby yarn uh, their yarn be be soft secret and it's number 86 uh, colorway hot grape it's a hundred percent acrylic and it is a number four medium worsted and there's uh, 300 yards per skein and it's beautiful let me try and stand up okay so you can see this beautiful mesh this color is just adorable look at that it has this nice sleeve I'm wearing a, a black uh, cami underneath it but you could wear this clearly like as a cover-up if you want it to now um, let's see if I can get the bottom has a split split him I don't think I can I can't get the bottom into into view I'll just try and raise it up but there you go has a split hem and what I'll do is um, I'll include uh, a picture in here so you can see it but it is beautiful I, I love it and it is so soft and like I said before um, I don't discriminate with uh, with yarn um, so this is by being uh, acrylic it's uh, you can machine wash it but I don't I don't machine wash any of my my knits or crochets any of my uh, fabrics I I, um, I hand wash everything and I did I, I hand wash this and slightly blocked it just a little but I am just loving this and of course it's in my favorite color which is purple this color is called like I said hot grape and I think she did a fantastic job uh, she also made one for uh, my daughter hers was more of a lighter lilac color but again you can if you want you could you know you could wear it off your shoulder um, you could wear it like I said as a cover-up um, in the uh, cooler months I could actually probably put a um, like a, a white uh, button-down shirt underneath here that would work um, or a, a t-shirt underneath here that would work um, really well so I love it this is the by Lion brand oh and the pattern is free and like I said this is crochet and this is the Lion brand easy mesh pullover Now, for the second finished object uh, that I did not make, that my mom made for me. By the way, I'm the baby of the family. So, yes, I'm spoiled. And, you know, you get bennies for being the baby. So, anyway, <laughs> the second finished object she made, it's called uh, Jessamine. And it is a Cardi. And... Let me show you the pattern. Isn't that pretty? I know I don't know if you can see it, but it's got these gorgeous, um, gorgeous baubles on it. And this is by um, Rosemary Drysdale. This pattern, and 
my mom made this out of she didn't use the recommended yarn um, but she made this out of Noro which is a Japanese uh, yarn um, manufacturer and it's Noro uh, Kumo K-U-M-O and of course I will leave the links down below but it is a light uh, sport slash DK weight it's a number three and it's 35% cotton, 41% viscose, 12% silk, and 12% wool. Uh, 100 grams, 393 yards. Okay. And here it is. And then if, if you can see the bobbles there. And what she did was she, she blended two colors, two color, colors together. This is just beautiful. And she blended a number nine, which is called Hashima. And that's this dark gray color. And then the other color is a number 15, which is called Karatsa, and I know I'm I don't speak Japanese, so I'm really 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 butchering it. And this is the Karatsa, but I hope you can see the work and all the detail. There you go, you can see those bobbles there. Look at that, that is just gorgeous. So I still need to I still need to block this. Um, let me show you the back. And I'll insert some pictures. I'll put this on uh, vintage. That's my mannequin model. I'll put this on vintage and take some pictures and pop it in. But it's a cute little, uh, shorter little uh, cardigan. And I love it. Jessamine. J-E-S-S-A-M-I-N-E is the name of the pattern. And I'll put the link to it. Uh, it's on Ravelry. I'll put the link to it below. Okay. Now, um, let's get to the whips, um, which is works in progress. Number one, I've been really, really working on the test knit to try to get that done. Uh, I'm not going to show that to you uh, today. I'll show that in the next episode because I should have it actually completed. When I do the next episode, hopefully will be uh, a week from today um, to meet the deadline. But I have been pretty much monogamously working on that uh, project and it's coming along quite well. All right. The second item that I'm working on is my vanilla socks for summer sock camp which is being housed in my Midwest Stitches bag for breaking yarn. And I showed these to you last time. This yarn is from uh, Knit Crate. And this is the project that I took with me uh, on our road trip to California. And like I said, it's eight, eight to eight and a half hour drive so I had 17 18 hours that I could knit and well this is it <laughs> this is all I got done I did not do a whole lot of knitting uh in the car there we go in the car I may have done two hours 
I did maybe another about another hour or so knitting with my mom during my visit with her. You know, it was weird. I just totally forgot that I had my knitting bag in the car with me. And we were just listening to some good music. Uh, the hubs and I having some really good uh, conversation. We were looking at uh, the scenery and we were just enjoying really our time uh, being together. We spent, a, we spent a lot of time together all the time anyway. And we enjoy, we enjoy each other's company. But it just felt good to be out of the house and on the road. And so we, I totally forgot about my knitting. So, yeah. So I'm starting on the foot. I think when I last showed it to you, I had just turned the heel. So here it is. This is this yarn by Knit Crate. It's got Stellina in it. So it's got sparkles. There you can see the sparkles. And it's a shorty. I don't like this yarn. And maybe that's why I'm not knitting on it. The yarn is beautiful. I don't like the way the yarn behaves. Oh, I remember now. When I showed this to you, I was trying out the flexi flips. I didn't like the flexi flips. And especially with this yarn. This yarn splits. It splits so much when you try to knit with it. So I ended up using, um, putting it on my standards of two two circulars because working with those three uh flexi flips and the yarn splitting i was about to have uh some type of coronary and it was not bringing me joy so that's when i slipped everything onto my fate one of my favorite way to knit socks is with two two circulars so I slipped it onto that and started and got this gets this far and started moving. But it just really, you have to be very careful. It really splits. And then I noticed that I somehow dropped the stitch way, 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 way back at the very beginning. And oh, here it is this is a drop stitch here's the ribbing and here it is here i am i i will tuck that in and tack it down on the inside when i'm done no i'm i am not going to rip all this back to here no that's not gonna happen so um which you know which is fine it's easier for me so this was my travel project that it traveled to California and back and it rarely saw daylight but I'm okay with that because I have a new cast on that I started working on earlier this week and it's been a secret and the secret is Here's the pattern. It's called Baby Vertebrae. Baby Vertebrae, and it is a baby cardigan. So why am I making a baby cardigan? Well, because I recently found out that I am going to be a great grandma oh! for the first time. Oh! Yes. My grandkids all call me Nana. So I am going to be a great Nana. A Jean. <laughs> yes. End of December, my uh, granddaughter is having a baby. And we... Uh, at the beginning of last week, we found out the gender, and it's a boy, and I've named it, well, from the time when I found out she was pregnant, I started calling it Little Nugget, and so now that it's a boy, Little Nugget is really, uh, really, really uh, appropriate, I think, for me, 
And so I decided to make a cardigan. This is my very first baby cardigan. I typically do not make baby items. I do, there is a baby blanket that I make for very special people. Um, and um, you know who you are because you are in receipt of those blankets. And I will be doing one for a uh, little nugget as well. But I said, well, you know what? I'm going to branch out since this is the year of the garment. I'm going to make a garment, a baby garment. So I'm making this cute little, it's a raglan a sweater. And with this pattern, it is uh, designed by Joe Copeland. Oh, no, that's the, um, I'm sorry, that's the photograph. It's by Kelly Van Niekirk. And it's really cool because it comes in sizes from newborn all the way up to two years old. And you can use yarn from fingering weight all the way up to worsted weight. So I can use this pattern over and over and over again as little nugget um, grows. So uh, I decided to um, use some, went stash diving and I'm making a size zero to three months and I'm using Malabrigo sock and the colorway is Impressionist Sky. Now Malabrigo is made in Peru. It's a superwash merino, 440 yards. Isn't that pretty? Is that a pretty blue? That's gorgeous. So, um, like I said, I've never made a baby garment before, so I did a swatch. And this is using a size uh, size is this needle. It's a 3.25 millimeter. And I think that's a size, let me put my glasses on, for U.S. Yeah, for U.S. it's a size 3. And it's a 3.25 millimeter. And here is my swatch. And I thought, that is so pretty. Well, after I did my swatch, I didn't get gauge. And gauge was uh, on fingering weight, four ply, 28 stitches for four inches on um, the size three, US three or, or 3.25 millimeter. And I got 20, 20 inches. So I could have either gone down a needle size and re-swatched. So what I, actually, I'm sorry, not gone down a needle size, gone down a needle size, gone up a needle, no, gone down a needle size because my stitches were too big. So I needed to go down a needle size. That always confuses me, yes. But it's like, I don't want to go down that far. I like the fabric that I was getting. So then I could have dropped down to making the size newborn. But I said, you know what? It's a baby sweater. Really? It's a baby sweater. So I don't care if it doesn't meet gauge. It maybe comes out a bit bigger than what it should be because it's a baby sweater. You know, it's it'd be different if, um, you know, I was making this for uh, maybe a, an adult then I'd really, you know, do things with it. But it's a baby sweater. So anyway, I decided to go ahead and cast on and continue with where I'm going with this. And it's got, I'm, I'm still doing the little raglan increases. It's so tiny. And here it is. Let's see, can you see that? So those are the fronts. And 
here's the sleeve where the sleeves will go. So I just finished. I'm no, I'm just doing my last. I'm just doing my last increase so that now I can split off for the sleeves and then work the little body. <laughs> I'm so excited. So this will be. I don't know if I consider this a, a full garment for my uh, making my garments for 2022, but I'm having a ball with this. And because I've been doing a lot of uh, searching on uh, for patterns for baby stuff, if you do a lot of baby knitting and crocheting and have some patterns that you have found are your favorites, please, please uh, let me know. Send them to me. Uh, tell me what their names are or send me a link or whatever so that I can take a look at them because this is very, very new to me, but I'm loving it. So I will be dedicating a lot of knitting uh, to Little Nugget. Um, I probably won't show them here on the podcast until after they've been uh, gifted to my granddaughter because on the off chance that she does watch the podcast, I want her to be surprised, but I'm blowing the surprise with, with this one. Um, but I just, I was just so excited. I just had to let you guys know. So I am doing um, baby knitting because I'm going to be a GN, a great Nana. All right. So that is that. And so far, like I said, this pattern, um, it's really great. It's really broken down. It's very, very, uh, very, very comprehensive. And, oh, that's what I want to show you. Everything, let's see, it's got my notes on here, but everything is color coded for the size throughout throughout the pattern. And I thought this this took a lot of time to to and dedication to do this. So hats off to uh, this designer. Okay. Now so that takes care of my whips. Whew. So now I want to talk about some uh, dream knitting patterns. You know, I normally kind of showcase patterns that I found that I want to knit either in the very, very uh, near present or the upcoming future. So for the uh, very, very near present, since we're still working in uh, uh, for summer sock camp, which is a knit along with uh, Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, you can go over to her website and you can find out all of the information on that. It's going strong. It ends at the end of August. So you still have plenty of time to get those socks made. And we're coming up on the start of uh, Sock Shark Week, which is a knit along with, um, oh my. Nitty Natty of Love and Stitches podcast and her uh, and I'll put the link to hers I believe her podcast starts it starts in July I don't remember the date but she has all that information there on her website and I will link that information so anyway I found another sock pattern that was just released on Friday I believe and uh, from this handmade life and it's called the Summer Picnic Socks. Aren't those gorgeous? They totally remind me of summer with the, the gingham. Reminds me, you know, of a uh, picnic tablecloth. And these are shorties. So this is a, a great pattern. Um, the designer is Olivia Villarreal. Villarreal. I, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, it's available on uh, Ravelry. And the pattern uh, is a charted pattern. The um, written, there is some written portions to it, but it's just like for the, the ribbing and the heel flap and gusset and the toe. To make the, the gingham pattern, there are charts for that. And there's charts, and it comes in three sizes, and there's uh, small, medium, and large, and there's charts for each side. So you will need to 
you know, do some, some chart reading and follow this. Okay. So this is a, a great pattern to add. Um, I'm not a big uh, chart reader because I have problems um, with my vision with reading charts. And I, I talked about that um, in one of the earlier episodes. So what I'm going to have to do is I really want to make this soft. So I want to sit down and um, try and, and, and get it translated for me into a written format. But um, it is so, so pretty. And in this, it's hard to tell. She actually uses three different colors. She uses two different color corals, a darker one for the ribbing and the heel flap, and then a lighter coral in the gingham stripes and then a cream. But there are just so many different color combinations you can do with this that um, um, the Hubs has already said he wants me to do a color combination for one of his favorite football teams, which is the Baltimore Ravens. And that's like a purple and black and gold. So I got to try to figure out how to work all that in there. But um, summer picnic socks. Take a look at it. Give it a try. Maybe you'll do it for some of these sock cows this, uh, this summer. All right. Okay. All right. Now, on to sips, which is stuff I've purchased. Okay. I was so lucky because they this was like one was left in stock. My favorite bag and progress uh, stitch uh, marker, progress keeper maker, three by the sea. Do you see this bag? It's humongous. And it has flamingos on here. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Has a drawstring top. Let's see. Look at that. And look at this little tassel. And the flamingo stitch marker. Too stinking cute. Beautiful canvas. It's thick. It's got the box bottom, so it will stand up on its own and definitely for a sweater. And the project that I'm going to put in here is the Yura uh, tee that I showed you um, a couple of episodes ago. And it's going to work perfectly in here because the color is like this hot neon pink oh, but let me show you the inside okay there's yarn in here and i'll talk about that so but the inside is beautiful oh man look at that and it's got a pocket you got two pockets actually here's one it's really deep I am so bad at showing stuff. And here's another pocket over here that's really big. And it is see, so roomy and I love that print. So, um, I don't know if there's any more of these left in the shop. Again, I will link everything in below, but I do know that they just celebrated their five year anniversary uh, on yesterday and they did a shop update and they've got a new collection in. And of course, I had to purchase some a celebratory stock. So that'll be coming in the mail too. But uh, check them out, Three by the Sea, beautiful bag. Okay, so what's in this beautiful bag? 
is another sip from a wonderful dyer. Her name is Cheryl Indy Dyer. She's a Canadian dyer, which I love watching her uh, dye. She has a uh, she has a website. She's on Instagram, and she has a YouTube channel. And I love watching her uh, dye. Uh, yarn on her YouTube channel and she's also a uh, pattern designer. I've yet to make any of her patterns and that will have to change. I do need to feature her in some of uh, my uh, dream knitting. She's come out with a sweater that pullover that's just gorgeous that I'm going to have to showcase in my dream knits. But anyway, she came out with this new, new um, collection or base, I guess is what you call it. And I lost consciousness. And so I just started throwing stuff in the cart. And then when I regained consciousness, I hit submit. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But here we go. Isn't that Pretty. Gorgeous. All right. You know, like how people sleepwalk? I sleep purchase. All right. So this is her base. It's called Mist. And Mist is 35% alpaca. 55% tinsel. I don't know what tinsel is. I'll have to look that up. But if you know what tinsel is, let me know. Put it in the comments. And 10% nylon. And I, it is 840 yards. So I think this is, is a six ply. Uh, I guess this might be like a lace weight. And this colorway is called Orchid. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Then we have this colorway is Shrimp, which is like, it's kind of blowing out here. It's like a um, blushy pink. It is so pretty. 840 yards. Not sure what I'm going to make with this. And this one is sailing. Oh my gosh, isn't that pretty? I don't know, maybe paired with some type of like mohair, but it almost has like a halo on it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. Any suggestions, let me know. Oh my gosh, and it is soft. So soft. Oh my gosh, look how that's looking. I don't know, maybe a cow, a shawl. I don't know. I don't know. Then we have lilac. Oh. I, I, I just couldn't I, I couldn't just put one in my cart. These colors were just winking at me. Cheryl, these are gorgeous. Just gorgeous. And last but not least, we have lavender. Oh, yeah. Mist, Essence of Autumn. And what, what uh, Cheryl does that is so cool 
is that when you purchase her yarn and she ships it to you, she gives you this wonderful little breakdown on what, what makes hand-dyed yarn so special, what can hand-dyed yarns be used for, then she goes in, how do you care for your, your uh, garments with hand-dyed yarns? I mean, she just, she just breaks everything down to you and puts this little, this little um, newsletter in with your purchase. And I've not had anyone do that. And I noticed that I purchased some other yarns from her and this is included with it. And this is just so, I think so, 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 so smart to do this. So intuitive to do this because a lot of people may not know how to handle hand dyed yarns or what to expect out of hand dyed yarns. And I just think, you know, that takes a lot of care and dedication to um, what you are producing to then go that step further and, and, and says, okay, here's what you can do with this. And here is how to care for it. I like that a lot. So great job, uh, Cheryl, Essence of Autumn. All right. So then last thing that we have is by my friend from Granite State Yarns, Lauren. I had not purchased any of her yarns and I uh, went on to her site. She had an update and I said, oh, need to, need to, um, Oops, sorry, need to fix that. And so <clears throat> I got a, a couple of uh, sock sets. So uh, this is called the Romance Dusty Rose uh, Romance. The colorway is Romance and the mini is called Dusty Rose. Granite State Yarns. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. So pretty. This is a 100 gram, 463 yards, 50 gram, I mean 20 grams of 90 yards, and it's four ply fingering. 75-25, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Look at that. So. That is so pretty. And this base is soft. Really, really soft. Okay. And then I bought her, it was called, these are minis actually. This is called the Rail Yard Minis. Um, last episode, I showcased her pattern called the Rail Yard Socks. So these are the Rail Yard Minis. And the colors are Whistle Stop, Overalls, Junction, Cross Tie, and All Aboard. And they're all 80% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon. Look at that. And these are 20 gram minis, uh, 80 yards. Ooh, aren't those pretty together? So I thought I would do some scrappy socks. I think I've made like one pair of scrappy socks and they really weren't scrappy socks um but i think that's what i'm going to do with these and i'm going to make them for the hubs beautiful those colors coordinated beautifully i really like that color there especially with the blue and the green so and I believe this collection is available on full-size skeins. 
uh, check out her check out her shop and she also has a YouTube channel as well and she's on Instagram so I will put the link um, to her in the show notes okay beautiful all right okay that is everything that I have for today um, went a little longer than what I expected it to go especially since I have any true with you um and as always uh please stay healthy and be blessed and i'll see you next time love you